Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of five on our series about engines. Yesterday we talked a bit about how the internal combustion engine works. I say a bit because there's a lot more to it than we could get to, but make sure you go watch that episode as well. And today we're gonna talk about the history of that system, of the internal combustion engine, and how we got one. The first one and all the ones since. So. Now that we know what the ICE is and how it works, where did this come from? You know, did somebody just sit down and think, you know what we really need to do? We need to get a piston and explode something on top of it and have that move down and that pushes up another piston over here and then we need to make sure that that's attached to this. That's not how it happened. In fact, engines have been around for a long, long time. The term engine used to mean any sort of tool like a fishing net or a rope uh, or something to put out a fire like a fire engine. So the modern meaning of the engine as we know it today, that was developed around the 16th century with things like windmills and water pumps and clocks. And, but the earliest engines, they, they ran on steam and they date back to ancient Greece. They weren't used for practical purposes for a long time, but into the early 1600s and stuff, they were used to pump water out of flooded mines. And you know, there could be a whole Test Tube Plus series on steam engines. So let's not get too far into that rabbit hole. Today we're talking about the internal combustion engine. And this seems to go back to a Dutch physicist named Christian Huygens. And he had an idea for a very early version of the ICE in the late 17th century. And the design used gunpowder to create a vacuum inside of the tube that would force the piston down, creating the power stroke. In the end, this plan didn't work out that well because you could only create a few power strokes and then it stopped working. But side note, Christian Huygens was a pretty rad dude. He discovered the true shape of Saturn's rings, he discovered the moon Titan, discovered the law of refraction, which helped him make really awesome telescopes, but when it came to engines, it wasn't the best. Other forms of the internal combustion engine were created over time as well. One in the early 1800s ran on hydrogen gas and was actually installed in a car. Someone drove a hydrogen car in the 1800s and I haven't even had a chance to drive one yet. Jealous. There are some who credit this as the first official internal combustion engine and the first time an internal combustion engine drove a car. A guy with the great name of Jean-Joseph Etienne Lenoir was credited with making the first commercially successful ICE in 1859, but it wasn't for driving. It was mostly used for pumps and for printing, and boring stuff. But it wasn't until 1867 that the ICE that we know and love got under the hood. That's the year that Nicholas Otto built the world's first four-stroke engine, not Otto, A-U-T-O, Otto, O-T-T-O. Please excuse my Midwest accent. This is incredibly important as the model for all four-stroke engines was based on the Nicholas Otto model. And that's right, the engine that you're driving now, this guy came up with the idea in 1862. However, he wasn't the only one. The point is, a lot of people had their hands in inventing the engine as we know it now. It's super complex, had so many different iterations, and this guy maybe invented this one little piece that then helped this guy kind of perfect his or her design, and then this person and that person, and so many little things over thousands of years have been invented, tested, and discovered that have slowly made the modern internal combustion engine possible. It's not like this one person invented everything there's, that doesn't exist in this branch of engineering. I only mentioned a few people, and that's because these were discrete stages of development of the internal combustion engine, but they weren't the most important ones necessarily. They weren't the least important. They were just three different stages. I didn't want the episode to be just me listing cool sounding names and old dates and saying this guy invented this one thing and that guy invented that one thing. I will say one more though, one more person. Gottlieb Dahmer. He patented a four-stroke ICE and developed the carburetor. Dahmer was the first to put an ICE into a four-wheeled vehicle. In fact, the car that won the very first car race ever won had one of Gottlieb Dahmer's ICEs in it. The actual engine is just a part of the whole equation. Think of how much just the starter has involved. Back when the ICE was first being used, people had a handle in the front of the car. You remember that in like cartoons and stuff? The handle would have to be cranked in order to get the combustion process started and the combustion process would, you know, get going because you were turning this with your physical muscles. 
but that was dangerous. That was difficult. It required you to be able to actually turn it over physically and could result in broken fingers and wrists. It got a lot easier once we put a battery inside of there. We got an electric starter. You would push a button, you would turn a key, and your electric starter would turn over the motor. But as we know now from this wacky technological world that we're living in, obviously cars are evolving just like every other piece of technology that we come in contact with. There were times when steam engines were powering cars. Back in 1769, first time that happened. Steam engine cars grew in popularity in the early 1900s, and there are examples of external combustion engines there. But the internal combustion engine was actually cheaper. It was a little better, more efficient. And now we're seeing things like hybrid cars, which are taking the ICE to a whole new level. But that wasn't done recently. They were actually invented around 1800. The problem is keeping the battery charged, keeping those voltaic cells filled with electricity is not easy. So in the 1890s, engineer Ferdinand Porsche, yeah, the Porsche from the, the car, and coach builder Jacob Lohner, they learned to team up to combine an electric motor and an IC, internal combustion gas engine. The ICE would help charge the generator, which gave power to the battery. They called it the Electromobile, and it premiered at the Paris Exhibition in 1900. This is a hybrid car, 1900. There were some other experimental hybrid cars over time, but it wasn't until 1997 that car companies figured out the first mass-produced hybrid car. That's 97 years in between the Electromobile and the first mass-produced one. So that's pretty much the incomplete history of the internal combustion engine, but you kind of get the idea that it's slowly been changing over time. And people have slowly added and taken away things to try and make it more efficient and get more power out of these tiny little explosions of gasoline or the heat from the fire that's heating the steam to turning the turbines or using voltaic cells. All of these different things have been tried. I implore you, Go look this up on your own. It's super fascinating. Somebody out there could do a weekly podcast just about engines and the history of the internal combustion engine in the auto industry. It's super interesting. There's lots of people. They do really cool stuff. And actually, in the research that we did for this episode, we saw multiple times that so-and-so was the first to invent the internal combustion engine that we know and love today, but that's not actually true. There's so many people that did all of these different things. I'm going to throw one last name out there, even though I said I was only going to do one more before. I'm going to do one more now, because I like you guys. Bertha Benz, wife of Carl Benz. Probably recognize that name. They say that Carl invented the first practical car that used an internal combustion engine. Carl's 1886 patent for his motor wagon helps claim that, of course. But we're talking about Bertha, Carl's lady, and she was known for driving the first long distance road trip in 1888. She went 65 miles, took her 12 hours, and she may have been the first person to stop and refuel, kind of because she had to stop at German pharmacies along the way and buy bottles of benzene. So technically, if you want to think about it that way, German pharmacies were the first fuel stations. Kind of neat. So Bertha Benz pretty much had the first car adventure and she took her passions really far on that, which is really awesome. And not unlike our sponsor for this series, Toyota. The new Toyota RAV4 Hybrid, how far will you take it? Let us know down in the comments what your favorite road trip was. Maybe you did one this last summer or you're going to do one in the coming summer. Let us know. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes this week. Tomorrow we're going to talk a bit more about that fuel. Again, we're not using benzene anymore. We've got something even better. So thanks for watching. We'll see you then.